Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be playing some Hydraneer. Are you guys excited? I'm excited! Um, this is a continuation of Hydraneer Day 1, so if you haven't watched that yet, you might want to go watch that. I'll put it somewhere on the screen so you can just click on it. So we're going to go ahead and just continue. And last time we got stuck in our hole because that's kind of, you know, the essence of this game, getting stuck in holes. We got a little water setup going so that we can uh, clean the dirt a little bit more quickly. And hopefully today we can get a construction hammer so we can lock these pipes into place and not accidentally move them. And then a pickaxe so that we can maybe uh, do a little bit more clearing out um, this little hole. So, yeah, we have a bunch of buckets here so that we can have a bit of an easier time in terms of how often we have to stop and empty the buckets. I really want a pickaxe so that I can kind of clear this out and just make it way easy to get in and out of. But pickaxes are a little bit expensive. Not like a lot expensive, just a little. I'm gonna drop the buckets so that when I start to dig deeper, I can just, uh, turn behind me and voila, there they'll be. But also I don't want to have to like carry them out of the uh, out of the hole. I want to just be able to jump out of the hole and there they be. I don't think I'm going to be able to access that one from down in the hole. So what we'll do is we'll grab our handy dandy shovel cause miniature avalanche. I'm just kind of clearing a bucket shelf. If that's a thing. All of the buckets are going to fall into the hole. Fall into the hole, buckets! Alright. So... Yeah, that works. That actually worked out surprisingly well. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just like, which bucket have I not filled yet? The answer is all of the buckets! Yay! I thought that bucket was going to fall, and I was like, don't fall into the hole. Don't do that. It's very rude of you to even consider doing that. So since we played last, there has been no update in terms of fixing some of the um, more blatant issues in terms of, like, catapulting off into the sun. I have also not been watching the update. Um, they do have, like, an like a development manifesto. I hate you. <laughs> Straight up, you are not my friend right this second. Um, they do have a development manifesto. I have not been paying any sort of attention to it. So I'm sure there'd be lots of juicy information in there. And if you are interested, I am sure that you can go um, check it out yourself. I can't reach this bucket that I put way back there. I'm getting stuck on my lamp. Boop. Boop. So I'm running into this section. I don't know if you can really see it, but it starts like right here. Up here is not mineable. Um, it's like the edge of our mine. It's a little bit hard to tell, in my opinion, like what you can mine and what you can't. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, okay, you could just disappear into the void. That's fine. I didn't want to be your friend anyway. Yeah. It's weird, sometimes they bounce and sometimes they don't. And I'm just like, well... If your, if your behavior could just be marginally more predictable, I would appreciate that. I'm gonna just pour this guy in here. We're gonna not pour this guy in there. Uh, the... But, <laughs> I dropped that in such a way that I feel it should have definitely gone straight into the... But it didn't. Darn it. Darn it, Jim. Just gonna shoot the water off into space again. It's fine. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh. It's just today is gonna be one of those days. It's fine. Thank you. Not thank you. What? What is your beef? Do you have some kind of personal vendetta against me, water setup? Doo -doo. Yep, that's exactly what I intended to happen. I, this actually probably <laughs> would do me some good to be like a little bit higher. So then I could get the bucket like actually under. Though water output but literally you guys saw it. it just worked the last time sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't gonna drop you right there I'm gonna drop you <laughs> right here there that should be close enough Yeah, okay, thank you. Whew. So apparently, in addition to needing to get a pickaxe and a hammer, oh, we need to get um, a couple more pipe sections. So that this is as convenient as I wish it to be. So that that doesn't happen, that's why I need the hammer. I didn't know that I could lean things so conveniently. Can I? Can I? Like, is that intentional? Is that something you just allow me to do? I think that that was just like, good luck. Cool. Cool. There's no point to that, that other than it kind of looks a little more tidy, you know? Like, like, I know my jam. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am a serious miner. A professional. <laughs> I love it so much. It's just my absolute favorite. water thing was supposed to be convenient. Guess what, sir? <laughs> it's not convenient. It's not convenient at all. It's the opposite of convenient. It's really irritating. Alright. That We're like making some money and stuff. Oh, rude. Drop it. Yeah, good job. And jump down into the hole. Oh, 
Just a little bit of catapulting, not too much. What? So... One of the more interesting things that I've discovered about life as a miner is that this bucket is apparently full. Or something similar. Yep, that bucket is full. Okay, interesting. <laughs> what was I saying? One of the more interesting things I found um, in life as a miner is that uh, if you dig up dirt and then you put down the dirt on the ground, uh, when you go to dig it up again, it's two shovels instead of the one shovel that you put down. Um, so this game does not believe in no, the conservation of mass. Which is fine. I mean, <laughs> laws of the universe were meant to be broken, right? Doop. Doop. I don't have to make sound effects for it. It makes sounds effect sounds effects. It makes sound effects already. I don't have to add my own. But mine are cuter. Cuter? More cute. Quick! What's the actual word? Is it cuter? Or is it more cute? I'm trying to think of the spelling of the word cuter, and it definitely in my brain looks like the word cutter. And I'm like, well, you know, each their own, I guess. All right. Now it kind of looks like our hole's like actually like going places. That makes me excited. I mean, progress makes me excited. Holes that go places. I don't know. I say that because <laughs> a hole that goes a place is a tunnel. And speaking of tunnels, so there's a tunnel in Australia. I can't remember the name of the um the town now i'll put a link below in the description so that if you're really interested in it you can look it up and um know what i'm talking about but i was in australia recently and i was just looking on atlas obscurus um which if you've never checked out that website you should um but I was like, okay, just cool things that I want to go see. And I'd never seen glowworms before. So I was like, hey, yeah, I want to go see some glowworms. They had this tunnel that used to be a disappearing, disappearing. It disappeared. I'm, you're going to be, I'm going to be like digging out this section later. And it's going to be like underground. Just you watch. Anyway, glowworms, right. Old abandoned train tunnel. Um, that is mostly flooded at this point, um, has a colony of glowworms in it. And you can just go in there and check them out and blah, blah. Not, and you can't really just go in there. I mean, you can, but um, the locals do ask you to, uh, you know, not take a really bright light of, a bright light, light. Don't take a really bright source of light with you because the light is bad for the glowworms. Also, don't make a lot of noise because that's bad for the worms as well. And their colony is kind of dying out just because too much tourism, I think. Um, it wasn't really clear as to like what had caused them to start dying out. But just, you know, respect the requests when they're like, you know, don't point your lights at the glowworms. Don't make a lot of noise. Um, don't touch the glowworms. You know, that sort of thing. Just, you know, common decency. Okay, guys? Anyway, so tunnel. I, I went off on a rant there. I'm sorry. Um, it is literally just an abandoned train tunnel and it's flooded. When I first got to this tunnel, I got off this train. You have to walk a little ways. Um, there was no one there, not a single soul. And I was like, all right, all right, Koi, you can do this. Um, like, cause when you first walk in, it's like not really all that creepy because you're just like, you can still see all the light, um, from the tunnel entrance and the railroad tracks are still there. And also there's no water yet. As you get further in, 
you can start to hear like the dripping water and you're like, oh, that's kind of creepy. And it starts to get really, really dark. So at first I walked in, I got in pretty far, like not pretty far. I got in like 200 feet and then I was just like, I can't do this. I can't do this at all. So I like, like ran out of the tunnel like a scared little kitten and I called my dad. And I was like, dad, I'm at this tunnel. And I told him all about it. And he was like, okay. And I was like, and I'm scared. And then he (laughs) gave me the best pet talk by essentially telling me to suck it out, buttercup. He was like, seriously, you flew all the way to Australia, all the way around this world. Like what? You're going to get eaten by a ghost. And I was like, you don't know. I could get eaten by a ghost. (laughs) But So I was like, okay, stay on the phone with me while I go into this tunnel because I'm dumb. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'll totally have cell service in a tunnel underground. I didn't, like, I made it, like, 300 feet on the phone, or 300 feet, 300 yards, maybe? No, probably 100 yards. Okay, let's be honest. 100 yards in um, with my dad on the phone before uh, it lost signal. And it just, like, hung up. And I was like, okay, well... (laughs) Now I can't call my dad back on the train on the way home and be like, so I didn't make it. So I was like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. And then I also knew that like, I'd have to have like picture proof of making it. Otherwise my dad would be like, but did you really make it? I'm stuck. Uh, so I went down in this tunnel and I just sucked it up. Cause like, again, you don't want to use too much light cause you don't want to, uh, disturb the glow worms. So just walking through the dark, muddy abyss and your eyes start to adjust pretty rapidly and you can like see around. So it's not just like pitch dark, particularly as you get in, you start to see the glow worms and they're giving off just enough light that you can like see around. Um, anyway, went in, took some pictures of the glow, glow worms. They're not, they weren't terribly good. Um, to be honest, like I don't really know the right light settings and exposure time and all of that on my camera because I literally I bought this camera right before I left for that specific trip and I'm just kind of getting used to it. And anyway, but I did get some OK pictures. So while I was in there, I, um, another couple came in and that was a little bit disturbing, like a, another couple, a couple came in. Um, and that was kind of disturbing because they were talking at the entrance of the tunnel and I couldn't see them because that was like way down and like around the bend, but I could hear it echoing and ooh, that's creepy. So, um, they were taking pictures and stuff. I left the tunnel and like, I, like at the entrance of the tunnel, I ran into them and they were like, what's it like in there? And I was like, oh, it's super cool. And they were just like, "Ah, we're going to not go because it's creepy. And I was like, It is creepy. That's for sure. They ended up not going. I walked up the hill because I was looking for a view because it kind of seemed like we were in a valley and I wanted to see if I could walk up the hill. Like it's just an entirely residential area. So I'm just like walking through this neighborhood trying to find a vantage point for a picture of this valley. Could not find a good vantage point. Um, So I was like, okay, well, I want pictures of the outside of this tunnel because the tunnel is just so cool looking. So I go back to get pictures of the outside of the tunnel and there's these two girls and they are like um, from Melbourne, I think is what they said. They're like university students. They were on um, break, I think spring break maybe at that time or no. Well, yeah, maybe their spring break because it was like November. It was late October, early November. Um and they were like, uh, we want to go in here, but it's super creepy. And I was like, uh, I'll go with you. Like I was just in there. It's fine. I'll go with you. And so then I ended up walking into the creepy dark tunnel with the two random Australian girls that I met whose names I don't remember, but I am now friends with them on Facebook so that I could share pictures, (laughs) um, of the creepy dark tunnel. So I went in twice. It was way less scary the second time with the girls. But uh, that's my story of holes that go places. <laughs> Except for that one doesn't go anywhere. Because like the further you get in, 
um, you eventually do reach like the totally caved in part that like it doesn't go all the way through to the other side anymore. But I didn't actually make it that far because uh, a lot of people, I guess, bring like duckies, like little inflatable canoe things that are called duckies, I guess. I don't know. Um, because you do get to a point that you can't walk any further. And I only went into where like the, um, the water came up to like my knees, but my shoes were getting stuck in the mud and I'd only brought that one pair of shoes and they were my Merrells. So I did not want to have to buy another pair of shoes while I was out in Australia slash New Zealand. Granted, I do wonder if they would have been less expensive. Um, but yeah. On that same note, when I got up to the train station, because I was like, okay, it's time to go home, or, well, back to my Airbnb, I was like, okay, sweet, yeah, I'm covered in mud, and I'm about to get on this public train covered in mud, and I didn't really want to do that. And thankfully, 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 this train platform had, like, a water spigot <laughs> that was, like, sticking out. It was way down at the end of the train platform, but I did manage to walk over there, take my shoes off, rinse off the bottoms of my pants and my uh, shoes, and yeah. So instead of being muddy, I was just kind of dripping wet. <laughs> But while I was doing that, I did miss my train back. So then I got to wait for the second train. So I had a little time to dry off because like this was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It was an hour ride from where I was staying and I was staying half an hour train ride outside of Sydney, south of Sydney. So it was uh, kind of in the sticks, I guess. I don't really know what Australia considers to be in the sticks, but that would be in the sticks for where I'm from. Yeah, and that's my that's my tunnels, glowworm tunnel story. One of my dogs is just like having a weird dream or something. I don't know. She's twitching and groaning. I'm like, are you okay? She says she's fine. I seriously consider um, that I might need to start locking the dogs outside of the, the recording studio. But then I'd feel really bad and they'd probably scratch at the door because they're needy. Let's be honest. Um, okay. We're going to rinse this. We're going to put this bucket back where we found it. We're going to rinse off this dirt and then we're going to go see if we can buy a pickaxe. Or, well, we're going to see if we can buy a pickaxe and some of the other things that we're trying to buy, but I think priority right this second will be pickaxe. That was a pretty big iron nugget. Ah! Alright. Should we even try to get you unstuck? That's all right. There's this handy dandy unstuck button. There we go. And we're going to be very wary of the light pole this time. What? Oh, right. I'm about to get uh, stuck again. I did. Sorry. I forget that Q and E are not turn. A and D are turn. Reversing, reversing, reversing. I really do wish that... Honestly, good job, good job. Lots of applause. That was very well executed. It was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, it was like really smooth. It wasn't jarring. I don't know how many spins we did. But it was glamorous. Glamorous? Glorious. Beautissimal. Okay, I'm not going to drive this up the hill because I know how that will turn out. So I will walk up the hill like your common everyday peasant. And I think maybe we'll go over to the other place that sells things 
and see what they have to offer. 252. Alright, so... Yeah, we're so rich. I don't know how far away that other place is, but perhaps the truck will reach that far. Um, I know that has like a ugh, limited source of fuel. You have to um, refuel the truck, but it doesn't tell me like how full it is. And I don't actually know how to, it says, Refilled from the water tank. What water tank? Which dog is making that sound? There's a dog in the background making sounds. Uh, yeah, from the water tank. Oh, maybe I just pour buckets of water into it up top there. That would be interesting. Um, come here, coins 284. Wait. Hold on. Just ignore me. <laughs> if I'm a smart person, I'll cut that in post-production so that you guys, uh, don't know. Alright. Here we are, back in the land of shop. And we want to know what we can buy. So wood foundations are five. I don't really need any foundations right this second, I don't think. This is 42. A mining helmet. This is all stuff that you can like use to smelt. Let's pick up a pickaxe. Let's not pick up a pickaxe, okay. 122. <laughs> I looked at that like the total will have totally changed when I only have one item. Um, and the construction hammer? Um, Two hundred and eight. All right, back to being poor. Apparently, if you're not careful, your money will bind to your truck and not to your pan. I feel like that's not exciting. I was really worried for a second. I was like, did I just buy that pickaxe? And it catapulted off into the sun and I will never see it again. So when you use the pickaxe, it like digs dirt really fast, but it deletes the dirt. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you want to use it potentially to like get down real deep, but you don't want to use too much of it because then you lose all the resources. You have a finite amount of dirt. We're gonna just back up as quickly and ferociously as possible. Uh... Um, can I still get the things out of you? Because if I can, we'll just we'll just leave you there. Hep. <laughs> I didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. I mean, it almost worked out the way I wanted it to, but it just it wasn't quite right, as you can imagine. 
the turning radius on this thing is to die for. Also, you know, it just, it just definitely has, like, the most die-hard engine of all time ever. So much power. Yep. I think we did that last time, too. I'm so excited about my hammer. Come on, guys. A girl can be excited about her hammer. Okay. Chuck you over here. So I want to route this right here. I want to route the water up like one or six. Ah. Ugh, I'm hitting, um, the wrong buttons, in case you can't tell. That's what we want. Then we want to take this one. Hold E, left click. All right. Hold E. Left click. Just E. Left click. T. Yeah. <laughs> I just like when I go to hold E, I just always like drop stuff. That's just how I roll. There we go. See? That should work hopefully better. I don't actually know. And then you take the hammer and you tap on all of this stuff. That way, when I don't have the hammer on, it doesn't even highlight. Like, I can't move it. That's great. Because as you saw, <laughs> you might accidentally pick up things and then not mean it and it's just a terrible, terrible day. Yep, that's what I meant. <laughs> um, it's fine. I was like, well, I could route it closer, but I'm not going to. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to pick up this shovel... And I'm going to kind of move it. I'm going to try to move it, but I'm going to get stuck. And I want to move the buckets too. So that I can build a nice shelf for them that's easier. Now that I have the pickaxe. Alright, pickaxe. Okay, so this is as deep as this one goes, apparently, which is fine. Totally fine. I do want to drop this. Move this to right there. Yep. Can I kill that one little spot? Okay. So we can dig all of that out then. What we want to do... Oh, I guess, sort of, there we go, sort of, there we go. 
jump up here. And then we jump up there, I guess. Can you just walk? No. You can't. But... I was hoping to like be able to build like a little bucket shelf. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do that. Maybe if I just dig out like the top right here. A little ways. That can be the bucket shelf. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know what I'm saying. Just fall into a hole. Come on, Koi. You got this. Apparently my headset is going to die. Which is totally fine. It happens, right? So, ideally, in an ideal world, I'll be able to access these buckets from underneath. So what I actually think the problem is, is that like if I put the buckets on a shelf right here, it will interfere with my ability to walk up these stairs. I don't know that for sure, but let's see. So that should be a good bucket shelf, right? And if I come down here, come down here, right? And it does not interfere with my ability to walk up the stairs. Okay, sweet. We have a bucket shelf. Yes, go us. We made some great progress. So we'll pour this bucket out here. We'll hold E. And we'll just place them on the bucket shelf. I don't know how easy or not easy it's going to be to access the bucket shelf while mining it. Okay, so we'll have to see. The idea is that I don't want to have to move the buckets um, up out of the ca cave to uh, bring them up here and dump them. I just want to dump them and then set them back right where they were. So, we'll see. Let's see if this works. Yeah, alright. So we're now deep down in the hole. And I think this is some of the deepest dirt that we can get, so... That means that we're doing great. In terms of the sort of reward we'll get from this dirt. Yep, just like that. That was the plan. This way I don't have to carry the buckets out of the hole and then carry them back into the hole and all that good stuff. That just is a lot more steps than I really want to have to take. It does mean that I'll have to run to the buckets. What, run to the buckets? Well, walk to the buckets when I get further into, like, when my hole gets deeper. 
Um, but by the point that my hole starts getting deeper like that, I hope to have run the water down into the hole. And in that case, I'll just do all my washing down below and I don't have to bring anything up until I am ready to sell. And hopefully we can start um, figuring out where we need to go to buy the um, the mining stuff. There's like drills, conveyor belts, I don't know what else. Maybe there's wash plants. I super hope there's wash plants. and you don't have to brush your dirt yourself. Your, your dirt is self-brushing. Obviously, I call it a wash plant because I watch too much uh, Gold Rush. That's the name of the show. It's like, what's the show about mining? And they're mining gold in the Klondike. I think they're usually mining gold in the Klondike. But I don't think they're always mining gold in the Klondike. I don't actually know. My dad's really into that show. And so sometimes when I'm hanging out, we just watch Gold Rush and building off the grid and you know, all the real interesting stuff. I'm pretty sure those are probably all Discovery channels, like Discovery Channel shows, which is fine. But... Anyway, look at that. Some beautiful, glorious resources. I think these are the chunks that came from higher up, though. Of course, of course. The water doesn't land in the same spot every time. Just, I just have this magical shard that I don't know what to do with. I'm assuming that at some point I'll find the thing that it apparently powers. We're getting so rich, guys. The sun is coming up. Those two things are not related. But they could be. Yay! I threw my brush over into the... the I mean, that wasn't really what I had planned, but that's okay. I think we have an uncut ruby in there. We'll look in a second. I think this guy right here is an uncut ruby. I think this is our first gem that we found on this playthrough. So this is pretty valuable. Um, it would be more valuable if I could cut it, but I can't do that yet because I don't have a grindstone. But yeah. Look at that, guys. We found our first gem. This is just a chunk of iron. So all of the um, the ores that you find deeper down are much more valuable, and you don't find the um, gems usually until you get um, deeper down there. I have this like little tiny floating piece of dirt. Come here. Alright. Yeah, we killed that guy. Alright, so... Now we have got our pickaxe so that we could get all the way down and we can just start mining only the valuable stuff. We've got our little bookheads here so that you don't have to run around too much. And we fixed our water setup, I think. It appears to work 100% of the time now. We'll see. 
Okay, guys, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. We do have one more episode of Hydroneer planned, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see that when that gets posted. I upload every Friday and sometimes on Tuesdays. Bye!